Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gudi, and I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery, and assisted conception at the Homerton Fertility Center. So today we'll talk about the GnRH analog or GnRH agonist trigger and whether BMI plays a part in it and why do we need to know that. Uh, quite often all our drugs are related to the BMI and drug doses also change according to the body mass index. So what happens with the analog trigger? So in a paper published in RBM Online, which I plan to review, let's look at what data came up from that study. So how do we reduce the risk of ovarian hyperstimulation? And one of the major parts is to withhold the HCG trigger and give the GnRH analog trigger. And this significantly reduces the chances of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. Now, triptolin in Europe is one of the commonest used triggers at a dose of 0.2 milligram. I don't think we know the optimum dose required for USAD maturation. It seems that many of the doses that have been used seem to give the same result. But also we don't know what is the impact of the GnRH analog dose on the BMI and whether that changes and lowers the number of oocytes we get. So when we look at HCG, there is no doubt that HCG is linked uh, to higher BMIs and HCG levels are lower when measured in blood for age as well as the BMI is higher. But looking at the same trend, you do not see a general trend that shows whether you need a higher dose of GnRH analog when a BMI increases. So this study was a prospective observational cohort study. ICSI was done, and this was done in patients with a high risk of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome from January 2017 to July 2018. And these patients were considered to be at a higher risk of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, and they had more than 19 follicles, more than 11 millimeter in size at the time of the trigger. Stimulation was started with 150 of recombinant FSH. Citrolix was started as a flexible protocol. Again, what I mean flexible, it is when you, when you see follicle size reaching 14 to 16 a millimeter. Three or more follicles was the minimum required to trigger analog uh, uh, release. And there was a freeze-all protocol of vitrification at blastocyst stage. So at the same time, there are hormonal assessments done, which had looked at FSH, LH, E2, and progesterone eight and 36 hours after the trigger, and three, five, seven, and 10 days after trigger. And what was the outcome measures? The outcome measures were metaphase two oocytes. Secondary measures were cumulus oocyte complex, oocyte recovery rate, fertilization rate, duration of FSH stimulation, and early onset of an hyperstimulation. So 113 patients, BMI of less than 25 and BMI of more than equal to 25. What they noticed that it required a higher dose and when BMI exceeded 25 kilogram per meter square, and there were no differences in the number of stimulation or the number of follicles. On the day of triggering, were very much similar. So if you have a look at the results, and the results do indicate that in women with a higher BMI, there were less metaphase two sites, and the, the, the fertilization rates remained very much the same. So if you, look at the, if you look at the results, the metaphase two sites were lower when the BMI was higher. There were higher number of mature oocytes, the retrieval rates were higher, maturation rate was higher, and fertilization rates were very similar. If you look at the FSH and LH, this, in both the, the cases, they showed a characteristic increase and reached the baseline on the day of the trigger and the student levels peaked eight hours after trigger and then decreases constantly reaching the baseline about seven days later. And that's something important to remember. Remember that almost all your hormones after the analog trigger start 
crashing down. And that is why if you're planning to use it in a fresh cycle, you are going to get lower results. So BMI did correlate negatively with oocyte maturity in women with a BMI greater than 25. The limitation of the study was there was no live birth rates and number of oocytes was higher when the BMI was lower. So if you, re if you now review and see what happens with the analog trigger and you can review it by looking at the FSH LH results. And so what does the analog do? It displaces the GnRH antagonist from the GnRH receptor and that's the way it works. And it allows it to elicit a, a gonadotrophin response or a surge which in both normal and high BMI. So, and that's the way it, it would work. It, dis, it, it just knocks off the antagonist from that side. And in fact, it doesn't matter. I don't think it matters at what time you give the antagonist and what time you decide to give the uh, analog trigger. We think that from general studies that BMI may play an important role in clearing the, the analog on the GNRH receptor sites, very similar to what happens with HCG. In conclusion, I would say that with high BMI, there may be a reduction in number of mature oocytes, and maybe there may be a dose finding link to a general analog trigger, and probably giving a slightly higher dose may be beneficial. Thank you very much. If you do like these talks, please share them, and hopefully we'll be able to sp spread as much amount of evidence-based medicine across. Thank you very much.